I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And in this France travel vlog, we're going to share how to travel France by train. So we spent six weeks traveling through Southern France by train. And in this video, we'll be sharing all of our experiences plus plenty of France travel tips so you can plan your next trip to France. When we travel, we look for methods of transport that are environmentally friendly, cost conscious, and methods that the local use as well. And train travel fits perfectly in with that. Yeah, we just love train travel. And we've been traveling by train since 2013. So our first big train trip was overnight in sleeper trains going up the coast of Vietnam and then across Southern China. And we've traveled extensively by train throughout the world. We've been on trains in Japan, the US, we've been across the Rocky Mountains in Canada, we've even been to the end of the world in Argentina. And France has been one of our favorite places to travel by train. So we're really looking forward to sharing all of our experiences with you. So all up, we took the train all the way from Toulouse to Ventimiglia in Italy before continuing on on our Europe journey. And that trip in France cost us 74 euro 10 per person. Yeah, so that was really affordable uh, and a great way to see France. So that was around 690 kilometers in total or 420 miles. It was 10 hours in total and uh, each trip was between 30 minutes to three hours for us. France has a variety of different train brands and they all come in at different price points and different speeds as well. So the fastest is the TGV and they're the high speed trains you generally have to reserve them and they're a bit more expensive. There are also other high speed rail services that take you to other parts of Europe like Germany and Switzerland. And there's the Eurostar as well, which is also a high speed rail service. Yeah, there is also a low cost service in France called TGV Wego. So we did take this between Toulon and Nice. That's a budget alternative, but it's also high speed, which is the best of both worlds. That only runs on certain lines. We mainly took the low cost, non high speed trains. The two main ones are the TER service and there's also intercities. So the difference between them is who operates them. The TER are operated by the regional councils in France and the intercity is also a non-high speed rail service, but it's operated by SNCF, which is the overall national rail network provider. So when you arrive at any train station in southern France, one of the things that we were appreciative of was that the train stations generally were centrally located. They were either in the middle of town or somewhere very close to the centre of town. And they're really well connected with public transport, which is really handy. If you're lucky, in some cities they actually have free transport, such as on certain days in Montpellier. They also generally have bike share services outside the train station, which is another handy feature. So they're usually app based, but they're pretty cheap methods of getting around. Yeah. And another thing that I really liked about the train stations in France were that there's free Wi-Fi everywhere. Yeah, that is definitely very handy, especially if you don't have internet on your phone. We also appreciated their public toilets, which are generally free to use. Sometimes they are paid and they're generally around a euro if you do have to pay for them. Yeah, so I think that was in Nice, but most other places had free public toilets, which is great. Yeah, so other facilities that you'll have, there'll usually be some fast food options, there'll usually be a couple of shops, news agent, that sort of thing. Then there's the self-service ticket kiosks, as well as manned boots. So next we're gonna talk about what trains are like in France. Yeah, so we were very impressed with the quality of the trains in France. They were very modern, very clean, and they were very comfortable as well. Yeah, the seats were really comfy. There was a lot of space between you and everyone else. A lot of the seats had desks, so you could work away on a computer or a laptop. That was really handy as well and they had electrical charging outlets, which was very handy. Not the USB ones though. They had 
toilets, which were free to use, and they were generally very clean yeah. and well equipped. They usually had bike storage areas, plenty of overhead storage and separate storage for your luggage and space for mobility impaired people to put in their wheelchairs or whatever they need. Announcements were usually given in French as well as English, and some compartments had electronic displays which would show the next station coming up. But because we were on the cheaper trains, we generally didn't have Wi-Fi on board. They didn't generally have cafes or any of those sort of amenities. But overall, they were very comfortable. They were air conditioned, big windows, very bright and clean. And we were very impressed. So the next part is how you book your tickets. So for us with the TR trains and the Intercities trains, we use the app and website Trainline. We found it to be really handy. It had great functionality. And what I also liked about it was that you could see days ahead to see what times of the day were the cheapest rates, which is very handy. We also tried to use the SNCF website and their app and I just found it really cumbersome and I could never actually get to the stage of booking. So when you are booking trains and you're not from France, we recommend going through Trainline instead. And there's no commission charged. It's the same price as if you booked directly with SNCF. You can also book tickets directly at the station, either uh, from a teller or from the self-serve ticket booth. What we found to be a little bit peculiar was that the TER trains asked you to print out your tickets. Uh, however, the Intercities trains accepted the digital tickets. Now, in practice, we hardly needed to show tickets at all. We, it was only once or twice when we had to show tickets anywhere. And in the instances where we did have to show our tickets, the conductors accepted the digital versions, even on the TER trains. Yeah, so we never printed out our tickets, but if you are cautious, then it's probably a good idea to print it out if the instructions on your tickets tell you to. Yeah. One other thing about the booking is that some trains will have reserve seating, but others don't. So just be mindful of that. So there's a lot to like about trains in France. And one of the great things about train travel in France is that it is so well connected. You can really go to most places within the country using the train lines. Mm. The services are really frequent and reasonably priced as well. And you don't need to book that far in advance. So generally we'd book about five days in advance and we'd get a reasonable price. Now, France does do the dynamic pricing, so it does get more expensive the closer the date you get. But generally, we found even booking just a few days ahead, we'd get some pretty good deals. The sooner you book your tickets, the more availability you're going to have in terms of trains throughout the day. So we also liked that the trains were modern and comfortable, and there was heaps of storage for your bags as well. So there were a few things that we didn't like about trains in France, or at least the budget trains that we were taking. And the biggest one for us was that Wi-Fi wasn't available on a lot of the trains that we took, particularly the TER trains. Now, it is available at the station, so that's handy. Yeah. But if you like working while you travel then or getting on the internet, then you may not have that option. So another thing that we've seen in budget trains in other countries, which isn't in France, is USB ports on the TER trains. So that's something I would like to see, but it's not a deal breaker. There was one incident that we had uh, when we were traveling in France by train. So uh, we rocked up at the station at Carcassonne to find that our train had been canceled. It was partly our own fault in that we did get an email sent to us that we hadn't read that the train had been canceled. The train line app didn't give us a notification that it had been canceled, so it would have been good to, to have that. Uh, and the other thing that complicated matters was that our train was in the middle of the day at the time when all the train staff go on their lunch break. So it was quite a stressful time for us, but we worked it out. Another positive is that you can change your bookings very easily. So you go to the self-serve booth and you can put in your existing ticket and get a change in time. So we're able to get that all sorted and we're able to take a later train that day. So yeah, with no additional costs, which was nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So. Yeah, it, it all worked out well in the end. And another con which I've mentioned before is that the SNCF 
app and website isn't really that user-friendly for foreigners and it's very hard to make a booking. For some general train tips when traveling in France, we recommend that if you do book online, just check your email before you leave for your train because trains can get canceled. Or delayed and you don't want to get there early with no train to catch. The second thing is you want to get to the station ahead of your train, but not too early. You generally don't have the train platform scheduled until 20 minutes before your trip, so there's not really too much need to get there earlier than that. Once you know what platform you're on, then you have to make your way to the platform and then work out what carriage you're going to be on. So before you board your train, just double check that you're on the right platform and you're on the right carriage before you go in so you don't get to the wrong place. And remember, when you're catching trains in France, you'll need your ticket, be that paper or digital. Uh, you'll need a mask, particularly in COVID times. That can be any type of mask, but you do need to wear them at the station and in the train. When we were traveling, we needed a COVID vaccination certificate, but I believe that is no longer required. And be careful with your luggage. Do not leave it around unattended because pickpockets are around and you also don't want to look suspicious by leaving a bag unattended. So finally, we've got a few French words for you that may help make your train travel easier. Gare means train station and wa means platform. We hope you enjoyed this video about train travel in France. If you did, make sure you click that like button and leave us a comment. And if you want more great travel advice and travel inspiration, then subscribe to join us on our bucket list journey to reach 100 countries. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.